Bloomberg News. Now we're going to talk with Noriel Rabini, CEO of Rabini Global Economics and Professor of Economics at the NYU Stern School of Business. Welcome, Noriel. It's always a pleasure to have you on Open Exchange. Great being with you today. I have to ask you right away about what's happening with the automakers. You have already said we're in a recession that's going to get worse. If this automaker situation is not resolved and these companies are forced to liquidate or restructure and jobs are lost, how much worse potentially would the recession get? It could become more severe, definitely. I think that these uh, automakers are systemically important. Directly and indirectly, a couple of million jobs are related to the auto sector. If they collapse, it's not just them. It's the auto dealers, the part makers. There's a whole economy in the Midwest that is related. So the financial consequences also on the CDS market could be severe. And let's think about it. After all, we're providing almost $2 trillion between TARP and liquidity support to financial institutions, some of which are near insolvent. So providing 15 or $30 billion of low interest rate loans to automakers seems to be fair, in my view. We need to do something also for an important part of the real economy. What should be done right now for the real economy beyond TARP, beyond the Federal Reserve making moves on interest rates? Well, uh, private demand is collapsing right now. Consumption is falling, residential investment is still in free fall, and now capex spending by the corporate sector is falling. And therefore, if there is no private demand, we need to have a boost of demand coming from the public sector, a major fiscal stimulus by the government of the order of 500 to $700 billion. Otherwise, even if we help the financial system, if the economy is going to tank in a severe recession because there is no fiscal boost, whatever we do to help the financial system is going to be undone by a more severe recession where credit losses default by households and firms are going to rise. So we need a major fiscal stimulus like the one that the new administration is planning to have. And how would you differentiate between a severe recession and a depression? Is that off the table? I don't believe we're going to be in a severe depression, but this is going to be the worst recession we've had in 50 years. It started December 2007, expects it's not going to be over until December of 2009, 24 months, three times as long as the previous two. And even the recovery could be so shallow in 2010-11, it's going to feel like a recession if you are out of it. So not a great depression, but we could have this global stock deflation, I think a global recession and deflationary forces in the economy in 2009 into 2010. So it's severe short of a depression, but very severe by any standard. What we want to do now is bring in our other guest, and that is uh, Jim O'Neill of Goldman Sachs. Jim, thanks for joining us as well. We were just talking with Noriel, who sees a very severe recession and uh, deflationary forces, if you will. Give me your view on what's happening with the deflationary picture in the U.S. and abroad. Well, I think uh, what's really going on is since the failure of Lehman, there's, there's, a, there's a new shock on top of what was already a pretty weak situation for uh, the United States especially, but also for the world as a whole. So we've, we're essentially seeing the, the global credit system cease to exist for a month in October, uh, and it's still pretty fragile since. And you see it in terms of uh, knock-on effects of letters of credit and many things to do with international trade. And uh, whatever the data you look at anywhere in the world uh, is incredibly weak uh, in the past two months, which is causing a huge drop in commodity prices, which means all these big rises in consumer prices earlier this year when people were somewhat ridiculously talking about inflation uh, is now being reversed and we have the likelihood of negative consumer prices uh, year on year in many economies as we go into next year. I don't think that should be regarded as deflation, but given how what kind of sexy uh, attention that gets in the media, it, it will be, but it won't be real deflation. But you're going to get a period of negative prices in many different economies. Uh, Nouriel, let's go back to what's happening here in the U.S. How severe in terms of a drop in GDP and a, a, a rise in unemployment rate as far as the U.S. economy? Well, I expect that GDP is going to be negative growth until the end of 2009 and the recovery of it in 2010 is going to be well below potential. I see the unemployment rate peaking above 9% sometime in early part of 2010, and I see a cumulative fall in output from the peak until the bottom of about 4%. It is the worst we've had in the last 50 years. So by any standard, this is going to be the worst recession the U.S. has experienced since the 1950s. Uh, Jim, let me go back out to you. What is your outlook for emerging markets in 2009? Are we going to see any improvement at all? Well, I think that the only growth you're going to get in the world is coming from some of the emerging markets led by the big ones, China and India. Uh, it's going to be a lot weaker than this year and certainly much weaker than the past five years in both. 
Uh, but I think people shouldn't get too bearish. As uh, soon as China shows signs of dropping below 8% growth, uh, out they come with a huge stimulus. And, and I think uh, one of the positive surprises next year will be that Chinese domestic consumption will stay strong. So I think investing in Chinese equities for the first time in three years is very attractive. Uh, in India, where people are getting just as bearish, uh, people shouldn't underestimate the, the benefit of a massive drop in oil prices. That's a problem for the likes of Russia, uh, and many other uh, Middle East and, and commodity producing countries but for places like India it's a huge benefit so I don't think things are quite as bleak as many people currently seem to rather fashionably say. Jim O'Neill of Goldman Sachs, thank you so much for your time. We turn now to Noriel Rabini who might be as bleak as some people think. Noriel, where do you see the markets going in 2009 uh, globally here in the US and abroad? Well I'm still bearish about US and global equity for a variety of reasons. First of all the macroeconomic news are going to be much worse than expected. People are not yet pricing a severe U.S. and global recession. Secondly, earnings surprise are going to be on the downside. I see earnings per share of S&P 500 firms next year between 50 and 60. And we have a multiple that could range between 10 to 12 in a severe recession. You could have an S&P as low as 600, for example. So I'm bearish. And also you're going to have a number of other financial shocks that is still deleveraging by hedge funds and other highly leveraged institutions. A number of emerging market economies could get into a financial crisis. So I think that the equities are going to fall another 20 percent before they're going to start to recover when there are stronger signs of a global economic recovery towards the end of 2009. Well, if that's the case and we see equities fall another 20 percent, we're talking about really an unprecedented period in history. It is unprecedented, but this has been the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. The credit losses are going to be close to $2 trillion. This is a huge bubble in housing and credit across the world in commodities. And now we're seeing the deleveraging process and it's a severe recession. This is going to be globally. Therefore, I see still downside risk to a variety of risky assets, equities, also commodities, even credit. What's the bright spot? I'm going to try to have you find one, if you can at all, for next year. Well, the bright spot is that uh, the policymakers now, at least in the U.S., are realizing this is very severe, and the monetary policy and the fiscal policy response is going to be very aggressive. But it's not very aggressive all over the world. In Europe, the ECB is behind the curve. The fiscal stimulus is too weak. And therefore, there's a concern that while the U.S. might be stimulating the growth rate through monetary and fiscal policy, other countries are not doing as much. What do you make of the uh, recent weakness in the dollar? I think this weakness of the dollar is going to continue. A severe recession, monetary easing by the Fed, interest rates down to zero, quantitative easing, fiscal deficits, still large current account deficits. Those are all going to be bearish for the dollar in 2009. And commodities, potentially, what sort of losses could we see? Well, in a scenario of a severe recession, U.S. and globally, commodity prices have already fallen by about 30 percent from their summer peak, but I see them as falling another 15 to 20 percent before they bottom out because there's going to be further economic contraction in the U.S., slowdown in the BRICS, in China, all over the world. Was this all about a credit crisis, or is there something fundamentally about the U.S. economy that has to change that has made this cycle worse than others? Well, the excesses were really severe. It was, you know, too much borrowing by the household sector, too much leveraging by the financial system, easy money, easy credit, poor regulation and supervision. We've gone through cycles of boom and bust in the U.S. economy. And every time there is a boom and there is a bust and there is easing and there is another bubble in the economy, we have to start growing in a way that is more sustainable and less based on asset and credit bubbles. Could that be manufacturing through the automakers? Could be manufacturing, could be maybe investment in alternative energy and renewable resources. Probably those are going to be a growth sector for the U.S. economy over time. Nuri Albrabini, as always, a pleasure to have you on Open Exchange. Look forward to seeing you again. Pleasure being with you. Hear more Bloomberg News reports on the Bloomberg Terminal at AV Go, on Bloomberg Television, and on Bloomberg Radio. Copyright Bloomberg LP.